Hi there, uh, this is Cindy with Funky Country and I have not done a live in a really long time. It sounds like I'm at a, like an AA meeting or something and telling you who I am and what I haven't done. So um, I want to welcome you to my page. I haven't, uh, haven't been live in a really, really long time. Now, first of all, my internet service um, is eh -eh. And I'm in a location that's a really long distance away from my Wi-Fi, so I'm hoping that this is not going to be all grainy and fuzzy. If it is, that's the reason. Um, it's just because of my internet connection is not very strong, and I'm going to continue to work on that. Um, I'll see how this looks when I get done, and then I'll see what I need to do for the next one. Um, at Funky Country, country at my, my biz... What I want to do is I want to encourage you to embrace your crafting imperfections. That's really, really hard. And that's, that's really what I stand behind. I do it for myself every single time I pick up a brush or do a project. I look at it and I try not to be so critical of myself. And I want to embrace the imperfections. It's okay to not have perfect crafts. You're not in a factory. You're not a robot. And that's just what adds to the charm of your crafts. And it's okay to, for them not to be perfect. I really want you to, to embrace that. So that's what Funky Country is going to be standing behind. That's what Cindy's going to be standing behind. And I, and I hope that you'll take that journey with me. So tonight, um, I have a brand new system set up. I have a, a new, I, I showed a picture of it a little while ago. It's a new arm uh, for my lives. And I'm hoping that it works really well. So this is the first time I've used it. So hopefully... Um, I don't have any um, issues with it and it stays together. My previous one, another reason why I haven't done lives in a really long time is because the, the podium that I was, or the stand that I was using before was really sketchy. I wasn't sure if my phone would actually fall off during live and so I didn't want to take that chance. Um, and lives, let me tell you, if you've never done a Facebook live, it's scary. It is really scary. Um, I'm part of a, a huge group of women that craft and some of them won't do it. Um, you know, public speaking is one of the, is the number one scariest thing um, that people fear. And then you take that public speaking and you put it on a video situation where there's no one in front of you to, to talk to. You're talking to yourself. And then it's being blasted to how many people you don't know, numbers-wise, and people that you don't know, uh, personally, sometimes. And then, you know, then there's comments that come along with that. So there's the potential of putting yourself out there. And then I've seen some, some comments, although it hasn't happened to me, thankfully. You know, then you have to, to think about the comments that are coming across your page. So it is a really scary thing to do. Um, but it's one of those things that the more you do, the better you get at and the less, you know, scary it is. So I hope that this is my first a mini, mini, mini down the road because this is really where I want to take my business and really what I want to do with it. So all of that aside, what I'm doing tonight is I'm working on things for my booth for this weekend and I figured I would just pull you in and show you what I'm working on. These are really simple um, projects and there's three different mediums. I'm going to be using napkins on one, um, a transfer on another, and then... Um, some paper with a stencil on top for the third one. So you kind of get a variety of different techniques. So these are the really, really small things that I work on as opposed to some of the, the bigger items, more expensive items. So what I would call these things are shelf sitters. Um, I got these at, I think, Hobby Lobby during, I'm trying to read the sign on the back of here. I think it was Hobby Lobby and it was, it was gray and it said, let it snow on, on here. Um, and I knew that I, I just wanted the piece of wood. I think they were, they were a dollar, but I needed the piece of wood. I knew I could do something with it. So I encourage you when you're going into places looking for a base for your craft, go into someplace like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something, get things that are out of season. So they're getting clearance. Like right now you might be able to find maybe Easter stuff, right? It doesn't matter what's on it. You're going to sand it off and start from scratch anyway. You just want the piece of wood, right? Or you just want the, the tobacco basket or whatever it is that you're gonna be your base to build on. And so it doesn't really matter what's on it, you're gonna, you're gonna cover that up and make it beautiful, right? So this says, in fact, I'm gonna bring this a little closer. Maybe you can see that where I painted it black 
right? And you might be able to see where the wording still says, I can see it, if I turn it into a you know, certain light, it still says, let it snow on there. So initially I thought I was going to um, cover this up with uh, a napkin or something, but because it says, let it snow on there still, I want to cover it up with something else. So that kind of changed my idea and I had to kind of flow with that. So I'm gonna do something else with this one. So the other two, I painted out white, right? And I'm gonna to explain to you why I painted them out white because of what I'm gonna be putting on them, right? Okay. So this first one, I went ahead and painted the sides and painted the top so it's good to go. And I'm gonna use a napkin on this. This has been my new passion, I guess, is napkinizing. I follow a lot of crafters, a lot of crafters. And one that I really love that, that got me inspired to do napkins uh, as a new medium is uh, Miss Tracy. And I think her page is Miss Tracy Creates, T-R-A-C-E-Y. And she's in Texas in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. She does amazing classes. And if you have any interest in this whatsoever, I highly recommend that you follow her. She doesn't even know who I am, so I'm not, I'm not building her business or anything. Um, I just really respect her. I've learned a lot. And so the techniques that I'm using um, are some of hers, some of them are mine. I just, I've learned along the way. So I have this napkin. I, tr I really, it's one of my favorites. This is a McKenzie Child's napkin. And I'm gonna take just a section of it since this block is fairly small. I'm just gonna take a section of it and just, let me say this too. If you're going to cut a napkin, and Ms. Tracy will tell you this, you always wait to split it apart. There's plies, right? So napkins have plies, either, either two or three. Generally on the package, it'll say two ply, kind of like toilet paper, right? Two ply, three ply, whatever. Um, if you're going to cut a napkin and only use part of it, be sure to cut it first and then split the layers. It makes a huge difference. So typically if I were going to use and you're seeing like my real background. This is like my real work area. It's not pretty. You're not gonna see the really pretty decorations and stuff behind me like a lot of people do. You're gonna see the real thing. And my dog is barking. But this way, I can just easily grab stuff. So if you were gonna use this entire sheet, right? Then you would go, it if you were to use this block, you would go ahead and cut it and then peel it because you're gonna use the entire square. That's the difference. If you're not going to do that, then you want to cut it first and then peel it apart. So I'm just going to, and hopefully, I think you can see this pretty well. I wanted to angle the camera so that you can see this, but I'm just going to pick, I know that my block is fairly small, right? So I'm just gonna pick an area where I, that like that the where the flower is and then I'm going to even have it drape over the sides a little bit and just kind of give it that dimension because I am making a shelf sitter and it's to be on those the tiered trays like I have one here that I was I've been working on I was going to show you but like these tiered trays um oopsie that you can, you know, put stuff on or, you know, on a mantle. These are these that's why they call them shelf sitters. They just Right, they just sit. But I use them in these trays and stuff like that. So anyway, I wanted to drape across the sides so that you can see it from all sides. And so I'm just gonna pick an area. While I'm doing that, if you're watching this, some of most of, and that's something else I learned too recently, is that 90% of your viewers are gonna be on the replay. So, that's interesting. So whether or not you're here on the live or you are on the replay, go ahead and comment. I'm gonna see what I have. Randy's here, hey Randy. Hey Nadine. I have to get used to reading comments. That's gonna be interesting. All right, so I'm just going to pick the area and generally cut this out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna overcut, so I'm just gonna cut it this square here and about here. I don't want to waste 
the napkin, especially when they are, when you have a, just a few of them or they're expensive. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to, I know kind of where I want this to be, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut this out and cut this one. I'm going to go around that flower because I might want to use that in the future or something. Who knows? And then I'm just going to reposition this just to see where I want. I want to go ahead and cut out this blue flower. And I don't want to use it, but I don't want to ruin it. I'm just going to cut around it and then put that off to the side. So what am I, where am I at here? I don't want to have a lot because then it's just too much to work with. All right, so I'm just going to trim this bottom. I appreciate you all joining me. I promise these will get better. It's going to be interesting a few months from now when I go back and look at these. I'm like, man, I've come a long way. That's pretty cool. I'm all right talking to myself. All right. It's going to trim off a little bit more. And again, I want it to go down the sides, so I don't want to get too crazy with it. be good all right I don't want to go too far you know as they say you can always cut more off you can't put it back on all right bear with me here in a napkin there is embossing and I'm gonna bring that up to the camera close hopefully you can see that there maybe you can see it in the in the back right all those little dots so it almost feels like Braille that's called embossing. That's how it stays together. So when you are pulling a napkin apart that you're gonna use the whole thing, including the embossing area, there's, a, there's one technique to do that. Um, now I have cut all of the embossing off. Now this is Miss Tracy's way of splitting, splitting the napkin together. I also, you can also use um, little pens, little straight pens and you can pick it apart but I love her technique. It grosses some people out. I, I think it's fine. That's totally up to you and how you want to do it. But it, I can tell you that it works. So here's what she does. She licks her fingers and gets them sticky and then touches the napkins and it sticks to your finger and pulls right apart. If you have ever tried to pull a napkin apart any other way, you're gonna go, oh my God, that's brilliant. Now, without even looking at the package, I know that this is a three ply because I've taken off the one, I just trashed these, right? See how it's still white, it looks really white here? It, is, it really is. There's another ply because you, you, you really want it to shear. So one more time. And it just pulls apart. Now you have to be careful when you're doing this this part right here. Be very, 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 very careful because you don't want to inadvertently tear what you've taken so much time in cutting out. All right. Now this one does have a little bit of the embossing on the bottom of it. I just realized as I was taking it away, so but it was much easier splitting it from the area where it wasn't embossed. If I would have had it flipped, it would have been a little bit different, more difficult. I probably would have used a pen. But because I used the area where it's not embossed, then it's much easier. All right, so now, Mod Podge. Mod Podge, not Mod Podge. Although that was how I said it many times. Again, going back to Miss Tracy the Expert, um, she is well aware and people tell her all the time that there are other mediums to use um, other than Mod Podge for napkins. There are, there are mediums out there specifically labeled you know, uh, napkin decoupage. 
Uh, she swears by Mod Pod. She says she's used them all. She doesn't like them. She always goes back to this. So I trust that. I'm not going to even try to buy. I have this anyway for other projects. So I've never even wanted to go out and, and spend the money on something else. If she said this is the best thing to use also and use it, um, the matte, which is the yellow um, label. There's different kinds of Mod Podge. Use the matte and that's what, that's what I'm going to use. So I'm just going to get a, because um, this is a small area, I'm just going to get a small brush. And so the first step is to lightly coat Mod Podge onto your project. Now, let me go back to why I painted it white. See the background of the napkin? Most napkins are going to be a white background. Very, very few are going to be a, a different color. And so what you want to do is you want that background to melt into your base. And so I painted it white and it will appear magically as if this was painted on. It's amazing how you don't even need to cut this out, right? You don't even need to bother cutting the napkin away because it's going to melt basically melt into your project and you're not going to even see it. It's going to look as if somebody hand painted this piece of wood. It's going to be amazing. All right. So I'm going to take some Mod Podge. You don't want it slippery wet. You just want enough on there to adhere it. Try to get to the edges as much as you can. And you can always go back and like lift up areas that, you know, didn't adhere and just stick a little tiny bit of Mod Podge underneath to get it to glue. And that's, you know, you always try to get enough on, try to get the edges, but every now and then there's just a part that doesn't stick. So here's where all my motto of embrace the imperfections in your crafting, right? Napkins are notorious for wrinkling. Uh, whether you want to call that texture or however you want it to be, it still, I still try to avoid the wrinkles as much as possible, right? So she'll just put it on there and then she's got this technique um, where she'll take a, a chip brush and pounce. I'll do that. But she just lays it on and then pounces. I'm a little bit more strategic. <laughs> so I'm going to lay it on almost like in, a, in sections. So I'm gonna, I know where I, I want it to, to go. I'm just going to lay it over. I know that I want it to drape over the sides. So I'm going to be very careful on my placement. I'm trying to get that in the center. And once I know where it's going to go, I'm going to just press the bottom. I'm pressing about a quarter of an inch here. It doesn't matter which, which direction you start. But I'm going to just pat. Use my finger and just pat. While I'm patting, I'm pulling down, I'm laying down on with my other hand. Very, very, very gently. And I'm just smoothing as I go without doing too much pressure because the last thing I want to do right now is to rip this napkin, right? So just taking my time. I move this over a little bit. Just taking my time. I'm patting and I'm moving. Now that I've got enough Mod Podge on here to where it's not gonna dry super fast, it just doesn't do that. And I'm just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And this is going to dramatically decrease the amount of wrinkles. So it just, it just goes to what do you want your project to look like? Are you really in love with the wrinkles and like having that texture? Then go for it. It's yours. Make it how you want. Um, this is just something I have done over trial and error, having done many, many of these in the last month or so. Now, I don't have enough Mod Podge right here, so it's not sticking. So I'm just going to grab a little bit here and... Again, very lightly. This is when the, the napkin is at its most fragile. And you just need to be very, very careful. 
don't over stip it. Um, because it's wet underneath, this is the time that it's going to tear. It happened to me uh, a few nights ago, which makes me think, so there's another reason why I don't like think about doing lives. So I have a potty mouth and it's gotten worse and worse and worse over the last few years. And I was working on something last night that I have done many times, but it just wasn't going my way. And it's a good thing that I wasn't on a live because if I would have had to have a very strong filter. It was, yeah, there was a lot of language being thrown around and it wasn't very nice. All right, it wasn't very nice. So there's the top. I've got a little tiny wrinkle up here at the, up here where I added the, the uh, Mod Podge, but I'm okay with that. So I'm just gonna flip it over to the side and I am going to attack this at, all at once. Oh, I'm sorry, I can get back in there. So I'm just gonna add, again, just a very, very thin coat of the Mod Podge. And again, I'm going to very lightly go over the corner and just tap, just tap. I do like the technique of taking, a, um, this is just a cheap, they call it a chip brush. You can get them at Dollar Tree, uh, like three in a pack for a dollar. And then you just come over here and you just stipple it, all right? Stipple, pounce, uh, there's different words for it. I'm just gonna hold and I'm just gonna, it helps to get the air bubbles out. That's another thing that napkins, if you've tried to decoupage in the past and were unsuccessful with it, that may have been why you gave it up is because of the amount of number of wrinkles or bubbles, right? So that it helps you get the bubbles out. Some people will actually put, poke a pin, like a, um, a straight pin like, like I had earlier and open the, the air pocket up and do it that way. So I'm just gonna go around. We had some major storms in our area I live in New Mexico, and this is monsoon season for us, which is a time of year in the afternoons that the storms will roll in, and it's it really is the the basis on how we get a lot of our water during the year. And so we welcome monsoon season. It's very necessary for us. Uh, it helps with our drought, um, but the, it's, they do come in strong. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna lose power or not. If I lose power, then I lose Wi-Fi signal. And so that's, that's not gonna be good. So again, I'm just going one more area here and you can see that I just it's it's gonna be how it's not even cut straight but that's okay on the along the side again it's gonna melt in and it's gonna look as if I painted that side All right, one more I did this um, this particular project first so that I it could be drying while I showed you the other ones. Again, I just want to get the corner there. Uh, let's see. So I'm not going to fold down that corner because I don't want to get, I just, I want this side. I don't want this. So I'm just going to, actually I'm going to stipple this one because it was a little wetter. I don't want to get my finger in there and then pull. What happens is if you're, if it's too wet and you use your finger, um, you, when you pounce, when you lift up from pouncing, you can lift some of that napkin back with you and that's not nice. That's not nice. That make me mad. That make me mad. 
All right. So that's what I've got. I've got this piece of wood with this really pretty flower. And then I've got the sides wrapped around. It looks like a hot mess right now, but it's going to be pretty. All right. Just have to do it in stages. So I'm going to put this aside and let it dry. I'm going to close up my Mod Podge so it doesn't dry out. And the next one I'm going to do is, if you follow my postings of uh, Funky Country, I am like a squirrel when it comes to crafts. You will never see me do the same thing over and over and over and over. Um, that's, not my, that's not my jam. My jam is watching about 30 different other crafters, getting inspired by them, um, looking at Pinterest, looking at all different areas, and then just trying it, right? And I like to have a big variety. It keeps me energized. It, it keeps me wanting to continue crafting and, and learning stuff. Uh, so one of the things that I tried recently, I had gotten these windows, like house windows, um, in Texas about five years ago. And they have three three panes and they're really that white, chippy, old goodness, right? And I've been hanging on to them for years, all these years, trying to figure out what am I going to do with them. Finally, I got inspired to do um, this transfer process. This is called IOD, Iron, Iron Orchid Design. There is a, you have to get these at a retailer that's authorized to sell them. There's one in my area. There's also one in Albuquerque. And so um, I went and got an IOD transfer and I did the window panes with the very different parts of the transfer. It turned out gorgeous. It sold the same day I took it to my booth. I didn't even really have a chance to like enjoy it, <laughs> which is awesome. I mean, even the men were walking by and commenting on it. And one of the vendors said that never happens. Men don't walk by and, and remark about crafts, but it was really cool. But so these, I have a little, a bunch of these little pieces where I'd cut out. I'm thinking, man, what am I going to do with these? But you save them as a crafter, you save these things. And so I was looking at this white piece of wood and I thought, I'm going to put this flower on there. So this is just the transfer. It was a major, major fail. Um, these are expensive. You get a tube of the transfer and it's $28. So it's not inexpensive by any means. Um, and I went to use it. I didn't, I thought I knew what I was doing. I thought I'd watched enough videos that I could, just, ah, I got this. It was a major fail. I always tell people when you're trying something for the very, very first time, don't try it on something that you're going to want to eat that give away the next day or give us a gift or keep for yourself. Something that's going to be really, because you might make a mistake and you're going to get really frustrated. And I'm like, ah, that's fine. I, I got this. Yeah, I was furious that I had failed uh, because it's sticky. It stuck to a part of the glass I didn't want it to stick. And when I went to peel it off, it was just a mess. So anyway, lesson learned. I went back and I had to go buy another one. So that window was wanted to be pretty expensive. All right, so I'm just going to, I kind of know where I want this to be and what size for this. So I'm just going to cut out um, a part of this transfer. And I want to, and I don't want to cut too far. I want to be able to use the other one at some point. Now I'm going to take it off and it had stuck to the paper too, which that was not nice. That was not nice. That was not nice. That was not nice. So I've got this piece and it comes with these little sticks. All you can do is rub it on. So I'm going to place it. We can still see. I'm going to place it. I want to get some of these leaves in here. I don't want to. I don't want to touch the wood because as soon as I touch the wood, it's it's over. All right, game over. So I want to put it right about. I'm gonna get the get as much on here as I can. Uh, 
All right. So once I get where I want it, then you just start pressing. And you can see it. It's kind of like putting like a car decal on, right? You've probably done that before where you rub it and then you can see where it's pulling away from the plastic. So you just keep rubbing until it gets transparent. And these, so we have these storms coming. We have this like a gully wash in my, I have three miniature horses and they have a, a paddock area and the, we have a French drain, but it doesn't drain anymore. So there's this major puddle when it rains. And um, horses typically don't like to be inside water. They try to walk around it. So I've got two of them out there walking around trying to, because they don't have depth perception. So to them, there's memes out there all over the place about horses and puddles. To them, it could be a, you know, a million miles deep um because they don't know any different they don't have depth perception so they're very afraid of puddles so anyway i've got two of them out there doing everything they can to stay out of the water and i've got one standing right in the middle of it i'm like kona what are you doing kona's the oldest what are you doing kona she's just standing there her leg is is um resting you can tell that she's just hanging out I'm like girl what are you doing and like, she hurt, that's always the first thing. Is she hurt? Well, no, she doesn't, she looks fine. She's just hanging. She's just hanging. It's probably her one way of getting away from the other two. The other two are much younger than her and they try to race her around a lot. And uh, it was just probably her way of getting away from them because she knew they weren't gonna go in there. Smart, smart cookie, that one. All right, so this is pretty much on, I think. So you just lift it up, and if it hasn't, again, it's like a decal, if it hasn't adhered, uh, we'll go right here to the side and go ahead and get that leaf on the side since it's already there. Might as well keep it. Might as well keep it and have it go along the side, just like they did it with the napkin. So there you have it. That looks pretty cool. There's your transfer. And the way I did it, it wrapped a leaf around the side there and leaves around the side there. A dollar, right? Plus the extra transfer that I had set on the shelf. I think it's pretty stinking cute. Now you can seal this. This is what I this is one thing I learned too from the retailer I got this from is um, you can seal it and that way it dust and if you've got it like in the kitchen and things flatter it's not going to ruin it right so i will go ahead and put a sealer on this uh the brand is called dixie bell i don't remember where i stacked my dixie bell dixie bell dixie bell ah yeah, so the brand is that she recommended was that she sells is Dixie Bell, and it's just a seal. It's like using polycrylic. It's just um, they prefer to, they they recommend using that over these transfers so that the transfers don't bleed. Anyway, just learning, learning, learning. So that'll get that'll get uh, finished up. All right, that's pretty cute. I like it. I like it a lot. It's always great when they turn out the way you envisioned them always plus 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 all right so this is this is dry so before I go on to the next one I'm gonna put the top coat very specialized top coat more Mod Podge it does everything all right Let me get rid of that be really cool is to have some music I, I guess Facebook doesn't allow you or like for you to have music playing while you're doing your lives 
I always hear people commenting about that. So it's interesting. So Facebook is all about community, right? To a certain extent, I'm learning. So I watch all these crafters and they, they're talking about, hey, if you know someone that might enjoy this, sprinkle it. Sprinkle it. I'm like, what the heck is sprinkle? Why are they saying sprinkle it? Well, after I watched enough of them, that little button next to the like somewhere down there that says share, supposedly we're not allowed to say that word. That's a bad word for Facebook. So they came up with they, whomever, I don't know, just at least the people that I follow, they all use the same word. They use, they say sprinkle. Now I'm even going on, being very, trying to be very careful here. I'm even going on to the wood that I didn't have anything on. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna glue it all, right? That's all decoupage is, it's just glue. So I'm going to seal that. It's kind of like a sealer like I was talking about before, right? So if things get on it, you can just wipe it off. Again, because the, it's still pretty fragile, don't, don't, be a, don't give this thing a lot of pressure. Just lightly put your Mod Podge on there. Don't go crazy with the pressure. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting that Facebook is about community. It's about sharing things. Oh, I say the word with your friends. Um, but they don't want you to do that. It's just very odd to me. Very, very odd. I don't know. I don't get it. What evs? All right. All right. So now that is sealed, it's going to dry. I'll put that away because I'm done with the Mod Podge for this evening. And it's gonna go over there. All right, so my next one, because I needed to cover up, because I said it still says let it snow in there, I can see it. I don't like that. So here's the third project, third thing I'm gonna do option is I'm going to take this wood and I'm going to cut out a piece and I'm going to overcut it let me make sure I'm over here where you can see I'm going to overcut it about a quarter of an inch an eighth to a quarter here's why because you're going to come back later I'm going to come back later and I'm going to sand it down smooth right so I'm going to overcut I'm just going to move the, move it in. This is um, bees, really pretty bees. Some paper I got from Hobby Lobby a while back. I didn't know what I was gonna do with it um, until just now. So again, I'm gonna overcut. I'm going to cut over the line, just about a quarter of an inch just to make sure that I don't cut it too short because I'm gonna sand it smooth later. Right, go back to my papers. And I wasn't being real careful about which bees I wanted and making sure, because I cut some of them off. I just, I just placed the wood and cut, right? Because I'm gonna put a stencil over. This is just to cover the black really um in fact i need that mop podge again um that's really what it's going to do it's just it's hiding the, the black so and here's something i discovered last night when you cut these it's unlike the napkin right i put the napkin over the wood you can see through it you can see exactly where you're putting it not the same when you use scrap paper it's not as opaque right and so sometimes when i was positioning the paper over the wood 
it was not hitting the wood the way I wanted it. And so I was having more on one side than another and it was difficult to sand and all the things, right? So here's what I learned last night. I'll show you in just a second. Let's get this corners. I don't want to have to try, try not to have to come back and hit the corners if I can avoid it the first time around. It's just easier to just get it right the first time. It's like a stamp. So I'm gonna lay the paper down and I'm going to take the piece that I want, the side that I want, and I'm going to press it down. So let me get this out of the way in case it's in your way. So now I can see exactly where I'm positioned. I can get as centered as I want. I can just make sure that I've got enough room on all sides. And because I give a little, it's, it's got a little bit of mobility, right? So I can move it just a little bit and then I get it exactly where I want and I just press. It was genius. I was so impressed with myself. So impressed. It's easily done, but I was like, oh my gosh. Now with paper, because it's such a, such a, a more it's such a more thicker, <laughs> I didn't take much English, because it's a thicker, um, thicker paper, uh, it's not gonna wrinkle. Um, I have done so many different things with paper and it doesn't wrinkle. So it's just, it's something I've never, I never experienced of having to worry about it. So that is going to dry on there. And then now look, look how, look how almost perfect that is all the way around. That would not have happened had I done it the reverse way of putting the wood down and then trying to position the paper on top of it. It would never have happened. It would have been all over the place. Genius. All right. Let's try this Mod Podge again. Uh, wait again. All right. I'm rolling up. So, stencil. I use stencils from three different companies. This one is called Essential Stencil. This one, this company, is the old fashioned where the, there's holes in it, right? This, this kind of stencil has been around probably since they started making stencils. Um, it's got the holes in it, as opposed to the other ones I use from um, a Maker Studio and Magnolia. They are like a screen print. And so they are completely different. I'll be using those in the future. But for this one, because it's the bees and it's the one I wanted to use, I'm gonna use the Essential Stencil from that company. And it's the old fashioned way. So I'm going to just place the bees on here. I'm gonna use my old fashioned kind of pouncing brushes. And I've got different size stencil brushes. I'm gonna go down a size, I think. Go down a size. I'm just reaching over here to get paper towel because with this type of stencil, there's some different prep stuff you gotta do with it. Uh, okay, bye Randy. So there's uh, some, some different things you gotta do with this type of stencil than you do with the other kind. So I'm just going to find where I want these stencils to go. I've got a nice white space here. Although I'm not really too concerned about that, I just wanna get this on. I got these little dots that are gonna run through it too. And I'm gonna get it on here in a good space to where it's not really going over the other bees too, too much. Let's see. That's probably a good spot. All right. I'm a very messy painter. I know this. I accept that it is what it is. See this where this bee is? All right. I don't want that bee in there. I don't want to that lower part of the B, the letter B, and I'm just going to mask it off. I'm just going to get rid of it. I don't want it there. I don't want it, it to be accidentally um, painted. All right. Um, I'm just going to get, I'm just going to cover it up. 
For this small area, I'm not gonna spray because this type of stencil you could spray if you really wanted to adhere and be flat. If I had these little tiny uh, pieces that were gonna possibly flip up while I'm stenciling, I would want to spray that down. Because I don't have that situation in this one, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna hold it as I'm stenciling. All right. So I'm going to use I'm going to mix products here. So this is a Magnolia design. This is black. And this is their paste. And I'm just going to use my brush. I want to go small. I want to go smaller. All right. I'm going to use my brush. I'm just going to dip into the dip into the chalk paste. I just want to grab a little bit of it and then I want to offload. So I'm just going to take this. Can you see? Uh, I'm just taking the, you know, the paper towel and I'm getting basically it all off, but it won't be all off. That's, that's the thing that people get in trouble with when they're doing this type of stencil is they look at it and they're like, Oh, nothing's coming off. It must be too dry. That's exactly what you want. Otherwise it's going to bleed underneath and you're going to be so upset. It's better to layer and pound and just go over and over and over it rather than trying to get it all in one. All right, so I'm going to do it one more time. And very lightly, I'm just gonna start going in an up and down motion and pouncing. Some people like to start off of the stencil, like in, a, in this open area, that's fine, you can do that. And then you can move it in, whatever style you wanna do. You're not Um, I was gonna say you're not going in circular motions, although some people do. I, I prefer not to. Um, I'm just. I, I think that I have a better result if I go up and down. I don't have the the potential of going underneath the stencil. All right. So I'm just gonna grab some more paint. I'm gonna offload. Come back in. And I'm just pouncing. I got these dots right here. I'm just going to try to grab them. More paint. More offloading. More pouncing. Doing it this way is also going to give you some shading that you may not have intended to have. You just you're going to pull this up and go, oh, that looks really cool. I didn't intend to have shading. But because of the way I offloaded and then came back and forth, I've got some really nice shading going on. And then the more you use these types of things, um, the better you're gonna get. And then if you watch other people and their styles and their techniques, you're gonna see different ways of shading and adding different colors that look you know, really cool. But just start with the don't, don't try to take on too much. Take on one type of style, get good at that, and then move on to something else. Crafting is supposed to be fun. Um, it's It really truly is what I think about when I go to sleep at night. Um, it's what I wake up in the middle of the night with an idea. Um, it truly, truly is something that I love to do. And the last thing I want to do is to make it to the point where it's frustrating, right? This is my creative outlet. This is my self-care is crafting. And for a lot of people it is. All right, so there's that one. And I'm just going to keep doing that. It's a, it's amazing to me um, how much passion people have for crafting. Uh, if you <laughs> If you're familiar at all with stores like Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby or even Walmart, for goodness sakes, in the craft department, um, 
pre-COVID, you could go in there and there was so much supply, there was so little demand, it seemed like. Uh, you could just about get anything. Um, and it it's just, it's really cool that some of the most depleted areas <laughs> um, of those stores was the craft area. Um, I was talking to a, a vendor that her booth is next to mine and she's a sewer. She can't buy, she can't physically go buy a, a sewing machine right now. Anywhere in the city, part of Albuquerque. Um, at least the one that she wants. And, and uh, it's, just, it's just amazing. It's such a cool thing that people are using what naturally I think comes to every human being um, is to be creative. And it's just, it's wonderful to see people maybe learning things for the very first time or honing in into things that they've done before. All right, this is where it's, it's like, eh. <laughs> but it looks really good. I can tell that it's covered um, with stenciling. It's one of those things that you, it's like a box of chocolates. So you're gonna lift it up. And that's what it looks like. Pretty cute. I'm happy with it. Happy with it. Again, it's just gonna sit on a shelf. So I always make sure I don't have any paint on me. So for this one, unlike napkins, I'm going to cut the edges off because it's nice and dry now. It's pretty hard. I'm just gonna cut them off. You could also use a, um, you know, that sharpener thing. God, I can't think of what it is. I have it right there. The one thing with the blade. Uh, Zacto knife. I think it would come to me if I just stopped thinking about it. Uh, but for me, this is just a lot easier. It's faster. I don't need an Zacto knife for this. I can just do it with scissors. Right. Because I'm going to sand it anyway. It's going to be. It's going to become part of it. So it doesn't really matter. So absolutely, um, if you want to. Um, Put Mod Podge over this, you can absolutely do that, that's fine. But I've got a little piece of sandpaper, and all I do, I've cut it really close. You can see in the back of it this way, that's, I mean, it's right up against it, right? Right up against it. Right up against it. So all I'm gonna do is take a piece of sandpaper. This is, I think, 80 grit, it's pretty gritty, right? So it's, it's tough. And I'm just gonna do it like, not really a 45 degree angle, but it is a slight angle. And I'm just gonna go along the edge and sand it off. And you'll see here in a few minutes when I do the um, when I do the napkin, it's gonna peel off. This is not, because I've cut it so close, um, it's not really doing that. And I, I like to get the corners um, just a little bit roughed. That's all you're gonna do, and it just, it goes right up against, it's magic. Also, I highly recommend that you, again, lesson learned last night, um, I went ahead and did a, a you know, something on top of a piece of wood, I don't have it here, um, and I decided I was going to paint the sides, and then I got paint on my image. I was not happy. <gasps> Not happy. So get it painted first. And then do your pretty decorating. You will be much happier if you do it in those steps. All right. So it is completely smooth around the sides. I'll double check it and make sure it's not lifting anywhere. But there it is, another shelf sitter. Done. All right. So I'll back, go back to the napkin. And what I'm going to do is because I put it on the sides here, 
I'm going to just go along the edges and get the corners off that I did not want adhered. Again, just using a 45 degree angle and you I may need to let it dry just a little bit because it's still a little spongy. So what you want it to be, you want it to be hard, I mean really, really hard. So I'm gonna give this another hour. I'll probably just leave it till the morning because it still feels a little bit wet and then I'm afraid that it's going to tear and that's the last thing I want to happen. So all I wanna do is I'm gonna go around and see where the edges are not all the way down here at the bottom. I'm just gonna go slightly over them and just, just very gently sand them so they, they do really melt into the wood. But that'll be super cute. I'll post a picture of this tomorrow um, of what it looks like. All done. The last thing I wanted to show you is kind of the same um, as I did these last night. This is what I was working on that I, I was a potty mouth on, are these printables. Printables are huge. A lot of crafters, I don't know how they're doing it or what, what programs they're using, but they're offering printables. And so you go onto their website or you go onto their page or wherever, and they have things that you can actually just print out onto your printer. I posted a picture of that last night of one of the crafters that I follow, uh, Wilshire, Wilshire Collections. Her name's Stacy. I think it's Wilshire Collections. Um, she has um, a bunch of printables and that's where I got some of the ones that I got last night, I printed off. Um, it's just another way that you can add art. And that's how we talk about napkins as being art, these printable art. You're taking a piece of wood and you're making it into art and these printables. So all I did was take a piece of um, paper like the bees, right? A piece of scrap the paper, put that on the base first. This is a little house. And then I put the printable on top of that right? And I didn't have any gesso. Now I understand that you're supposed to, when you do paper on paper, you should not, instead of using Mod Podge, you should use gesso, clear gesso. I don't know. I haven't done that yet. I haven't found clear gesso. It's in my Amazon cart, so I'll get it soon. Uh, but it worked out fine. It worked out fine. So I just um, put the paper down, Mod Podge, put the printable down, Mod Podge, and that sealed it. And so I'll go around and do the exact same thing. I just did the other piece, right? Um, my B, where my B? Exact same thing I just did with this one. I'll go around, I'll cut off the edges and it will look like this. Completely smooth along the side and I'll sand it. And that's it for shelf setters. I think that's all I was gonna show you and again, it's a really inexpensive thing to have, but they add so much impact. When you have, you know, a little stand like this and you ha have these little um, shelf sitters that you could put a little candle. I made this candle a while back. You may have seen me do that. Um, can you just arrange it? They just add a little bit. They're inexpensive. I think I, I put these in my booth for, um, I think $5 is what I sell them for, uh, four or $5. And it just makes, it makes it so cute, right? And so you can put them, you can put them on these stands, these two, there's, there's tiered stands, there's dough bowls, there's all kinds of things that people use um, just to decorate with. And so anyway, that's what you can do with shelf sitters. I hope that you enjoyed this. It was fun doing a live again. Um, I kind of didn't know how it was going to go, <laughs> but I've done enough of them to where I feel sort of kind of comfortable, but I know that it will just get better and better and better the more that I do them. It's like anything else, right? The more you do it, the better you get at it. I really would appreciate your comments. Um, if there's anything on my page that I have posted pictures of that I say, hey, I'm putting this in my booth, and you're like, man, how'd she do that? Leave me a comment. Say, hey, I saw a picture and you did, or hey, there, here's the picture and I circled it. Can you show me how to do that? I will absolutely come on. You see this behind me? <laughs> it is it is this much of what is really back here in my craft area. 
um, I could open up a store just in craft supplies. And so I have plenty of things that I can show you. Uh, so if there's something that you have seen and you want me to do it again, I'm sure I've got the stuff in my, in my toolbox to go ahead and knock it out for you. So just leave a comment. I'd be more than happy to. All right. So first one done. Boop, boop. All right, y'all. Go out there, craft, and embrace your imperfections with your crafting. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll talk to you later. Bye.